When I was a 17-year-old girl, I found myself standing in an Irish army barracks, wondering, why have I done this to myself? I had signed up for the Reserve Defence Forces, and I was standing there wondering, I'm not so sure about this, me in an Irish army uniform. What had happened was, a couple of weeks before that, a friend of mine had called me up and said, Breda, we're going to join this army thing. Right? It's the first time girls have been allowed into it in history. And I'm going, no, I'm not doing that. What would I do that for? I know nothing about the army. know nothing about any of that military stuff. I had no military family, no military background, no idea. So I said no, and I said, here, talk to you later. Hung up the phone, walked away from the phone. And you know the way you get sometimes that icky feeling? And you think, oh, what did I just do there? Did I just say no to something very unusual that probably doesn't come around that often? Yeah, I probably did, right? So I decided I was going to analyze my decision to see why did I say no to that and was it the right thing to do? And my question for everybody today is, have you been analyzing your decisions? And if you have not been, why not? Right? What I decided to do to myself at the time was, I thought about when my mum was 17, if she had had that opportunity, that would have changed her entire life. And here I was saying no, closing a door on an opportunity. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to say yes. Rang the girl, said, I'm going, we're going, we're in, right? So off we went. That was the first day that we had joined. Six years later, I became my unit's first female lieutenant. I stayed 20 years in the Reserve Defence Forces, and I loved every second. I learned how to lead, how to coach, how to train people, and how to shoot. <laughs> I'm still at it. <laughs> I really loved it, right? and it was brilliant for me. But the message in here is, had I not analysed my decision, then I was walking away from that. I coach a lot of people, folks, men, women, demographics, all over the world, and I'm finding we say no to a lot of things. Fear is what's happening. So when we start to spot it, it's okay, because we can overcome it. And we can use perspective swaps, like I did, thinking about what would my mum have done. I got really good at saying yes to things after that. I joined a show band, and I actually went and tour with a show band for five years around the country, called the Outlaws. So I became an outlaw. <laughs> Some would say I still am one. Then I joined a drama festival and drama competitions, and and I didn't know them either, and I went touring with them around Ireland. And then coming 40, I joined a rock band, and I said yeah, yes to that too. All right, because that's what you do with a piano accordion, right? <laughs> I did, and I'm still at it. <laughs> so the message in here is your perspective on the opportunities that are being handed to you. That's what I want us all thinking about. I want us to start testing our thinking. All right, because my life was going great because I was doing that. Now, what happened after that was my life took a strange journey after that, and I hit some dark years, right? And in them dark years, I felt like I couldn't cope with the environment I had found myself in, and it was stuff I didn't recognize. So I felt I didn't know how to cope with it, but I didn't know how to get out of it either, right? So there was a lot of unknowns, and I felt stuck. And one day, I was sitting with one of my kids on my knee on maternity leave, and the TV was on, and a lady on the TV said she remembered who she was, and the game changed. Boom, right? Just like a lightning bolt. And I thought, oh, hold on. The girl that I used to be, the version of me when I was younger, used to analyze decisions. She used to use different perspectives on what she was going to do out of her default automatic response. I'm not doing that. Right? So then I decided, right, well, then I'm going to start. So then I decided, right, whose perspective am I going to use on this stuff? Because I don't know how to do this. Right? I started to Google the most impressive, successful people around the world. And many of you have done that. Right? If you're not doing that, I want you to start. We are starved of inspiration, people. We need inspiration. There's loads of it out there, but we need to go looking for it. Right? I find amazing people in the world, philanthropists, thought leaders, you know, business people that have changed the world. And I decided, I want to be one of them. I don't want to be here stuck. So what I did was, I decided, right, well, what would they do in my shoes right now? 
not these ones. <laughs> my gold glittery ones, not these ones. What would they do in my shoes right now? And then I started to get insights because A, they wouldn't have accepted what I was accepting right then in my life. And then I started realizing they know their worth and I do not. Right, got to do something about that then. I began to study and I studied by myself for seven years on the topics of mind mastery, emotional intelligence, and lots of other things, right? I got very good at it. And I started using other people's perspectives. Now, the trick on this stuff is you must use perspectives from people who you know are big thinkers, game changers, and they have to be fearless. Otherwise, you're not, doing, you're not getting the right perspective on the stuff, okay? So I used that on what I was going to do. And I decided if they were in, in my shoes right now, not only would they not accept what I'm accepting, but also they would turn this into something better. They would learn their way here. They would do something with this, right? They're all productive people. They use resources wisely. So I'm going to do that. So I started to study. I ended up writing a methodology of over 40 topics when I looked back to see what topics I had ended up covering and studying. Right? So then I decided, well, if I've done a transformation on me, because I learned and I practiced a lot of the mind mastery techniques, all right? and I'm going to share one with you in a little second. But I learned a lot there, and I knew that if, if I've done it on me, I can do it on others. So I lifted and shifted the methodology that I had created onto others that also needed help. And guess what? Like that. It works like that. Right? Well, there's loads of stuff online. I would encourage everybody to have a look and see can you start learning, right? You all walk around the phone in the back pocket. That phone is full of information and I want you on it, right? And learning. Anyway, that was that. I got out of that situation, right? Through all of that. And I began to help people. And now I'm able to transform people's lives because of what I went through and because of my perspective swap exercises. And we're going to do that with you now, because guess what else I learned? That everything in life is a process. In the corporate world, right, and I've been in finance for the last 20 years as well, delivering transformation programs all around the world with people from all over the globe. And it has rounded me out lovely in terms of skills and experience, right? But I discovered that, you know what, everything in life is a process. Think about your life right now for me. Everything you go in to do is a process, and not just in work either. So I thought, you know what, I'll turn some of this methodology into a process. Because we like things that are easy. We grasp them quick. Because psychology can be complicated at times, right? I think it scares a lot of people off. So I made an effort to try and simplify some of the bits so that we have techniques now that we can all use. All right? So I want you all trying this. Here is one of the diagrams that I want you to follow. So here's what happens, right? So everything's a process. When you observe behavior, right, your senses are flat out all day taking in information. Your brain is amazing, but you just don't know how to work it properly, right? Your senses are taking in information, filtering information, and adding to the information you already know, all right? And then what happens is, so say there's an event or observation, and for today, we're going to use the scenario of somebody offering you an opportunity. So say someone has offered you something, whether that's a new job or something to get involved in. I want you thinking, has that happened to you? And how have you reacted? Because what happens is when we observe or, or there's an event or an occasion, or maybe you're part of a conversation, right? And you're listening, but you'll have thoughts and you'll have emotions. So you'll think something and you may think, oh, I don't know about that. Would I be able to do that? And that's what a lot of heads do, right? I'm not sure if I'd be fit for that opportunity, right? And then they often say no. But what I want to do is interject and get us to say yes to the good things in life, all right? So we have thoughts, we have emotions. Quite often, the emotion is fear. We are afraid of change. We are afraid of judgment. We are afraid of uncertainty. We are afraid of failure. And then you've got even fear of success. We manage to self-sabotage, us humans. So. Process goes, event observation. So I've said, here's an opportunity. Then you've thoughts and emotions, right? But what happens then out of emotion? Because remember, what, how you feel will drive your actions and behaviors. Now, what are actions and behaviors? They're what you do and how you behave. And what do they turn into? Your outcomes and results. Your brand and your reputation in the world. Right? So let's work our way back. Say, rather than doing actions and behaviors that actually aren't serving us in the world, are not the healthiest ones that we could do, let's interject. 
Any of you who listen to Mel Robbins, you'll know that she does a thing around a five-second rule. I want you all to look that up if you're not following her start. I've taken her five-second rule and I've tweaked it slightly into another version of putting your thoughts on ice. So what I want you to do the next time, and this is a process, so you're going to follow this process. Next time you're starting to think and you have emotion, I want you to freeze. Five seconds max, put your thoughts on ice. Do not react. Do not do a default reaction or response because it mightn't be the healthiest one. What I want you to do is swap your perspective on what you're about to do with a perspective of another. Now remember, it has to be somebody that you think is brave, courageous, and fearless. Think of the mentors around you in your life, but also think of those in the globe, right? Some of the big players in the world. What would they do? And I want you to then see what actions they would do, what behaviors, and I want you to do that. All right? Because then you're going to get the same outcomes and results that they would have got. That's what I want us doing. So it's strategic, right? If you want different outcomes and, and results and brand and reputation, then go backwards up that chart. Okay? So that's perspective swaps and the five-second rule. And just remember the lens of another. It must be someone that you think is awesome, not average. Okay? Then we're going to emotions, because emotions are important here as well around the perspectives. Because remember I said feelings drive our actions and behaviors. So emotions, we have loads of emotions, hundreds of them, right? But some of the basics are sometimes we're sad, sometimes we're happy, sometimes we're delirious, <laughs> sometimes we're anxious, right? We have loads of emotions and loads of feelings that happen to us. The good thing about emotions that I want you to remember is your emotions are clues, right? You have a subconscious mind. That's where all of your beliefs about yourself and the world are stored. That was programmed when you were a kid. By the age of five, six, or seven, and it varies, you already had beliefs in there. You had picked up self-beliefs from the society around you, right? Your unconscious biases had been developed in there. Your ego, if you have one, your sense of entitlement, and the long-term emotional memory. All of that's in the subconscious mind. Now, the good thing about this is if we have emotion, so say you get excited over a talk that you're listening to, that's a good thing. Say if you get sad or you get angry over something that you've heard today or in a conversation or perhaps a piece of media that you watch. Watch those emotions. There's your clue. Right? I want you to see your emotions as a gift because all of us was born with a full suite of working emotions. Not many of us have been taught to use them. But when you start to manage your emotions, you can regulate them and you can work them better, get better life results. So your clues, you start to work back. Why do I feel upset? So say you're in a conversation. Someone has said something, you pick it up, and you think, did they mean me? Ooh, right? That could be your subconscious mind has a little bit of a weakness there around one of your self-beliefs, and it could be holding you back. You could have a wee bit of insecurity in there and some limiting doubts, right? That happens a lot. But are they going to serve us in life? Absolutely not. Do we want rid of them? Absolutely. We want to reprogram those subconscious minds so that we start to get really the healthiest beliefs there is available in the world in there, right? Because that's going to serve you and those around you in the world. So how we do that is through words. The power of words is how we reprogram subconscious minds. Okay? So we talk all day, we think nothing of the words we use, but I'm telling you, your words carry weight. And the most important words are the ones that you're actually using on yourself. Self-talk is massive in, in us humans, right? If I could get into all of those heads today, it would all be positive self-talk. Nobody would be allowed to criticize themselves for a second, right? Our internal critic has a field day. We have a negativity bias that was programmed into us when we were in a cave. We were primitive people, and it keeps us afraid. So we go to the thing that, oh, no, I couldn't do that rather than the, yeah, I'll give that a lash, right? How are we going to reprogram those subconscious minds? We're going to talk to ourselves better. We're not allowing any more negative talk. Um, the word spelling, think about that one for me. The first five letters of the word spelling are what? Spell, S-P-E-L-L. -L. Your words are spells, right? You are a wizard. Now we're going to use words that create spells of positivity. So together, and with me, I am unapologetically awesome. 
Excellent. <laughs> I've been Breda McKeague. Thank you for listening. <laughs>